Welcome to another episode of Inside the Grind. I am your host, Serafina Malupe. Man, we have a very, very special guest with us today. I, I am just so grateful that, that he is here. I am so excited to talk about his journey. He is a Hollywood stuntman and actor and the stunt double for The Rock. He's won various awards for his stunts. To name a couple, he was awarded the best overall stunt by a stuntman in the movie The Rundown and the best fight in the movie The Fast Five. He's clearly a standout in his profession, but more importantly, he is a husband and a father. I'd love to introduce Tanawai Reed. Hey everybody. <laughs> oh my gosh, thank you so much for being hey, here. Sabrina. I can't express my gratitude enough. Uh, but you know, what are you, what are you up to? The, what are you up to these days? How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm currently in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, and we are starting production for Black Adam on Monday. Wow. So I've been here for two and a half months rehearsing the stunts and figuring everything out and uh, getting everything dialed in. And uh, Monday's the big day. Oh, yeah. man, that is so awesome. Is there like, it, I mean, just like the preparation, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it takes a lot, you know, it's just a lot of prep. Yeah, a lot of prep, a lot of training. You know, um, we get a script, which is just ink on paper, and we got to take those mm -hmm. The, the director and writer's visions and create reality, you know, create the, the fly, we're, you know, we're superheroes in this one, so we're flying, we gotta figure out the wire work and the fight choreography and, you know, everything and have it all ready. So when we shoot on the day, we know what we're doing. So yes, a lot of, it's about two or three months of prep into a big movie like this. You know? Okay, well, we're definitely gonna get into that, but I'd love to start off, you know, with you growing up in Hawaii, how, how was that? Oh, it was great. Um, I moved there when I was 11 years old. Um, I was born in Hawaii. I lived in uh, the mainland, California, with my parents, and then did divorce when I was younger. And I was going back and forth between mom and dad. And then um, my grandma was like, "Hey, bring the boy over here. I need a, I need a runner. I thought mm -hmm. I yeah, I need a." <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I ended up moving over there with her, and she raised me um, in uh, on the North Shore, Lai and Haula area. And um, yeah, grew up there with her, and it was it was amazing. Yeah. Oh, that's that's awesome and who and you're some you're i know you're a lot but you're like who is someone in your within your parents my dad is some my dad is someone um so his mom my son raised me mm, and she okay. raised me in the fast Samoa. she you know she i came in and she just said okay this is what we're gonna be what we're gonna do and uh it was a it was kind of cultural shock because i knew i was Samoan, but i was in los angeles mm -hmm. and uh she only spoke someone to me when i first got there and i picked it up really quickly and yeah she she yeah it was a blessing. Um, it was, you know, it's tough because it was, you know, Samoan style. Yeah, the style is different, you know, <laughs> especially with the grand with the grandparents. It's a different level, huh? You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. So, um, but it was, yeah, it, it definitely made me who I am today, for sure. Yeah. Oh, no, that's that's amazing. Yeah. But you know, I know prior to your career, now you, I know you played sports growing up. I'd love for you to for you to touch on that. Yeah. Um. So in high school at Kahuku, I uh, played football, and then I was uh, played judo. Uh, competed in judo. Uh, I was an interscholastic sport in Hawaii. So we played against other schools. Um, but yeah, I got a football scholarship at the University of Hawaii. Oh, wow. And I and I played there from 91 to 94. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That's that's great. How was your time playing at UH? It was good. It was good. You know, I, I had some injuries in the beginning. Um, I actually didn't finish my last year. Um, mm -hmm. The summer between my junior and my senior year, I got a job on the movie Waterworld. And that's when I was introduced oh. into the stunt and the okay. movie industry and so i i was i was yeah it was that story is pretty cool but i, I mean i i bit the forbidden fruit I, I got that movie money and i'm like i want to be a stuntman and i gave up my senior year and i moved to los angeles and pursued the industry so mm -hmm. the football yeah we're it lasted a couple years but um college college is fun definitely but, uh yeah, yeah. And what about it, just like, what about it being, you know, being a stunt double that, you know, you really was just like, man, like, I really want to do this. I want to pursue this as my career. Um, the camaraderie, like my first movie I did was Waterworld with Kevin Costner. And my first mm -hmm. stunt was riding a jet ski and shooting guns and falling off. I mean, every kid's dream, right? Yeah. And they're paying me for it. So that was even better. And I'm like, wow, this is amazing. And, I, and they, I just, you know, I, just, I, I had an opportunity and I just went with it. Mm -hmm. And it was the camaraderie amongst the stunt guys. It's like it's like having teammates, you know. Um, mm -hmm. It was just a good feeling. It felt right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. And I I love for you to touch on like just like the similarities mm -hmm. of you know your time being at UH and being an athlete to you know being a stunt double and what you're doing now. 
Yeah, um, you know, if you have an athletic background or, or played on you know, team sports, that is huge, um, uh, you know, making the crossover into a lot of different things, but especially as a stuntman because you have to be coachable, right? You know, mm-hmm. when you come on the field or the, or the court and the coach says, hey, do it this way, you got to race the way you usually do it and do it that way. Same thing, the director or the stunt coordinator be like, hey, we got to do it like this and you need to be able to adapt. And, and and on the fly, you know, yeah. and change and, and and do stuff. So being coachable is definitely um, definitely a benefit. Uh, and and this uh, training, you know, getting be, being prepared, you know, yeah. mentally, um, physically, all the prep that goes into it. You know, it's just like we're prepping for a season. You know, like mm-hmm. on this Black Adam, I had to get in really good shape. So I've been dieting for the last three months and working out and 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 getting myself ready as if the season is about to start. And Monday, the season starts for me. Oh yeah. yeah, no, thank you so much for, for mentioning how, you know, the importance of your diet. Cause like, I'm someone who's into working out and nutrition and, um, you know, just how important is it, you know, being a stunt double, of course, um, to maintain your, your, you know, your strong, your, in your fit physique, you know, how important yeah. is that for being a stunt double? Oh, it's, it's, it's huge. You know, Dwayne is such a specimen physically. Mm-hmm. He is a fitness, you know, addict and he eats so clean. He's very disciplined. Yeah. So he'll let me know every movie is different. The character, he'll be like, okay, this movie, this is the look. It might be a little bit bigger. It might be a little bit leaner, you know, depending on the character, mm-hmm. but he sends me the workouts. He sends me the, the diet and what he's doing. And, you know, we, we, I compare to him, you know, we, every couple months check in with them and then make sure that we're on the same page and just try to dial it in as much as possible to match his physique. Because once we're filming, I'm, you know, supposed to be him. So yeah. if my if my body looks different, it's not going to work too well. <laughs> no, definitely, yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, thank you for sharing that. But now going to be like a stunt double, has there ever been a, a stunt that you thought twice about doing because it was just like, wow, this is like looks really dangerous. Yeah, there, there have been some where I've been more, I call it more aware of mm. the things because they're a lot of high risk. But I haven't turned anything down. If I know that there is a stunt in a movie coming up that I am not ready to do now, I would definitely work towards getting comfortable doing that before I do it. Mm. I'll train, rehearse, you know, small increments, build myself up to whatever it is um, if I can. You know, some stunts you can't. Some stunts you just got to go and and you already have to rely on your natural ability and instinct. But there are stunts like high falls where you come out of a building if, if I've gone five, you know, 50 feet, five stories to a bag and they want me to go 80, you know, I got to practice five, five feet at a time to get up there, you know, yeah. until I get comfortable. So, yeah, it's just about preparing yourself and and then, yeah, doing it. Definitely. And then yeah. do you like do you have like a routine or anything that you do before, you know, doing a stunt? Not really. Um, Everybody is funny. A lot of us, every stunt man or stunt woman has their own little Thing they do before they get into it some some get all wild they're like yeah yeah they get pumped up you know they bang their chest and then i get really zen like everything just calms down and like i'm always a active person already i'm gonna go 100 miles an hour all the time anyway mm-hmm. and before i do a big stunt i'm like the master of that moment and I, everything goes boom, closes down and every every second feels like a minute and i just love being in that zone because i'm never in that zone it's like it's like doing you know, you're meditating almost you know yeah and when i get there i know that i'm just more aware of everything that's happening you know so mm-hmm. yeah i just kind of like like yeah more so there. i slow down you and, slow uh, down okay well, i slow down yeah and i just know it. this is this is i i do mental reps i go this is I see where I'm going to land. I know this is exactly how it's going to go. Kind of try to manifest the good outcome. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, for sure. Yeah. But like that helps though. Like, would you say like manifesting that into your mind? Yes. And seeing it before you do it, that, that helps. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, that's, that's so awesome. People always ask me like, oh, you guys aren't scared of anything. I go, no, fear is part of the game mm. because if you don't have fear, you, you, you won't be aware of the dangers. And then you, that's when you get hurt, you know, yeah. So the fear keeps you aware, you know, and, and yeah, in and, yeah, check. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's good. It's controlling the fear. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, that, that, that's a great point. Controlling the fear. And mm-hmm. um, what was the one stunt that you did that you couldn't believe that you're like, I can't believe I just did that. Was there a stunt that you thought that? Uh, there was some, on the rundown. We did this. It, uh, we, if you see it with Sean William Scott, they're in the jungle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We did this car thing. We drove a Jeep off a cliff oh, yeah, and tumbled down Jeep. the hill. And that that scene we shot for four days of tumbling in different locations and they cut, they edited it. So they cut the small pieces out and created that little clip. But we had about four days of footage of just rolling down the hill and smashing into things. And 
And literally, I couldn't walk to my hotel room on Friday. They had to get a wheelchair and wheel me up. And yeah. my wife's like, what are you doing? I go, <laughs> she was always like, what? what? Is this what you're doing now? I'm like, oh, man. Good. But um, Good. yeah, Look, that was a while ago. So yeah. yeah. What would you say was like the worst injury that you've gotten while doing a stunt? Um, probably, I've had a lot, but uh, Fast and the Fear is 7. I went through glass, and I, I don't know if you can see this scar oh, that goes scar. here like that oh. and this is actually like a like a like a plastic surgery the stitch they did but i had glass going to my arm went through a big pint of glass with jason uh stadium double and the glass wasn't tempered right and it broke into shards instead of crumbs and i had a piece of glass the thickness of an iphone about oh the size of an iphone going to my arm i landed on it hit the bone and then it just exploded so it cut my tendons ligaments everything i almost lost my arm i was in a cast from here to here for a few months and the doctor had to uh, come in as an emergency doctor. He had to come in and reattach everything, yeah. blood vessels, nerves, everything. And um, at worst case scenario, I asked him, he goes, worst case scenario is it, it doesn't take and, and, and we have to amputate your arm. So wow. that was scary. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was that was that was pretty nuts. Yeah, I mean, and there was, the medic came up to me and it was a hole squirting blood out like this. Oh, shit. And when when the medic came up, because I couldn't see it because it was in my back and it, it was yeah. like, don't look, don't look. And the medic's eyes were like, when the medic looks scared, right? That's when you gotta worry. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And Dwayne was on set there. I went to the hospital. They all came to the hospital before I had the surgery and oh checked on me. God. Yeah. So, that, that's wow. Yeah. You know, I just want to just I want to say thank you. You know, just for all of, like that's like a lot of like you know putting your body through that wear and tear. You know, but like creating the content, and putting these movies together, like just thank you. You know, I just feel, you know, just thank, thank you. you Appreciate it. Yeah. 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 You know, that's, that's awesome. But a lot of people yeah. don't realize like what we do, like now you see a lot of behind the scenes, but when you think stunt double, a lot of people are like, Oh, he just looks like him. And they're like a photo double. Yeah. But I've had like, my uncle came once to watch me rehearse and I was doing some big stunt. He's like, wow. Like you guys are really doing that. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, you, you, yeah. make, you see it in real life and you're like, this guy is actually getting hit by a car. It's not CGI. It's not, a car's hit, hitting him and he's flipping over the hood, you know, he's getting, or he's getting, you know, yeah. Yeah, and you're so. just like, you're like, you're literally like sacrificing your body, you know, what you're yeah. doing, doing this, you know, with your job, but so thank you. Going back, you know, thank, thank you, you for that, of course. <laughs> yeah. um, and so what my show is about it is yeah. the grind, you know, the grind it takes to get to where you are. You mm -hmm. know, the, the journey, it's full of ups and downs, you know, but, you know, overcoming adversity. And are you able to tell us though, what it took for you in the process, you know, and how you got to where you are and just be great at what you do. Definitely. You know, so going back to uh, my junior year in college, you know, football is everything and, you know, had all these dreams, aspirations. Then I found out about the stunt industry. I yeah, built the, the forbidden fruit, as I said, mm -hmm. and moved to Los Angeles to pursue the industry. Well, in Hawaii, I was a small, big fish in a small pond. I get to L.A., nobody knows who I am. Mm -hmm. Start working at bounce as a bouncer at nightclubs. You know, was making side cash. I had a, a pickup truck. I was living in my truck, trying to become a Hollywood stuntman, but I didn't have the right connections. You know, I didn't have a headshot. I didn't know how to do this. I just knew that I, mm -hmm. I worked on one movie, and I thought everything was going to happen for me, and it didn't. And you know, I, I, five, six months, eight months later, I'm, I'm living in my truck. I'm kind of pretty much homeless. Um, I moved back to Hawaii. Um, try to make things work. I was kind of embarrassed to talk to my family because I've decided to leave. You know what I mean? And yeah. it was tough because they're like, you know, uh, well, you made the decision, so I'm going to own it. I'm not going to ask anybody for money. I never asked yeah. anybody for any help. Um, and I was living in Hawaii and I was, you know, I was, it was young. I was 22 years old. And um, same thing. I was, I went in living in a van on this. I used to detail cars at this huge car lot in Hawaii by the airport. Okay. And uh, Mr. Lau, Ed Lau, who owned the lot, he, um, he took care of me, but, um, you know, the, the manager, I was telling the manager, I don't have a place to stay. So I stayed in a van. I was living there and it was, it was definitely a struggle. I showered with the water hose. Um, uh, I, I hooked up with some bad people, started getting into some bad things, you know, yeah. cause you're, you know, trying to survive at that age. Yeah. And, uh, and I was like, I, I still had this dream about being a stump. I, no matter what, I paid my, my psych, my screen actor skill dues, you mm -hmm. know, and kept it going. Yeah. Um, but I'm like, I started just going down, you know, and I was like, regretted leaving college, football. I'm like, I made a bad decision. And, you know, I, I and then about two or three years later, I met my wife and then things started going up, you know, I had a mm -hmm. purpose, reason to live. And I go, okay, I'm going to try this again. I'm going to try this stunt thing. You know, this is six years later. Uh, I go to LA. And I'm like, okay, I got my side card. I'm really going to hustle. I want to do this. I have a family coming now. 
Mm. And um, that's when the blessings started happening. And I started getting work and then hooked up with Dwayne on Scorpion King a year later after that. Wow. And yeah, so like everything made sense. Like if I regretted making that choice of leaving school, leaving football. Yeah. Cause it was like, you know, it, to me it was like, I, it was, it was, it was an opportunity, but I didn't realize it could end like the next day and I, I'm going to be a bouncer in LA. Right. So yeah. it didn't work out like I thought it was going to be. I couldn't even watch football for like two years. It made me sick. And like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause, um, cause I, you know, I was like, could have been, should have been, would have been course. in college or got my degree, all that stuff. And then um, as soon as I got married and have uh, the blessings came, then it started working. But like, it's just testimony to like, no matter what you choose in life, there's always going to be, if you keep following that path, you always have an option mm -hmm for it to come out okay, you know? You know, you know what I mean? It's people you, people make choices, there's things, you know, you have intuition, whatever it is, don't have regrets, just follow it and, 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 and pursue what you wanna pursue mm -hmm. and keep having faith and, and, and being resilient and persistent and, and then everything will work out all right. Wow. Cause right now, like if I look back, I'm still working, I'm 47 years old, I'm working in the movie industry. I'm pretty much a professional athlete of the in movie industry. Yeah. Uh, if if I, I I don't think I would have gone to the NFL, wasn't that good? But if I even if I did, or whatever, I would have been done by now. Mm -hmm. What do we know? So, so I'm blessed to be have the career I have now, and I'm glad that I made that choice yeah. when I did. You know, 26 years ago. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's. Yeah. Thank you for for sharing that. That's a, that's a, that's amazing. You know, yeah. to overcome to get out of a, a place, you know, where you were hit with adversity, you know, and um, well, I, I'm curious as to like, through those tough times, you know, what was like the mindset and your mentality to help get you through, you know, those times where you were homeless, you know, living in your, in your truck, like, what was like, what were those, what were your thoughts and what was that mentality that helped you get through it? Uh, th that God has a better plan for me. Mm -hmm. I just knew that, that um, I had this thing in my head, like, so you're, you're gonna be somebody or you're gonna like I I always thought I was gonna win the lottery if I played the lottery. Yeah. You know, I was like, something's gonna happen. I'm like, this is not it. This is not defining who you are. You know what I mean? This is temporary. I just kept telling myself there's bigger and better things for you, you know. Mm -hmm. And then be pushing on this this kept believing, you know. And I I believe in um, you know, the power of intention and, and, and manifesting things. Oh my god, you know what I mean? And I just kept putting it out there, putting it out there. No, no, I'm gonna do I'm gonna be somebody someday. And you know, a lot of times, even adversity, you know, I heard from my, you know people in my family friends like when I when I left football they're like what happened to you like no future you know what I mean like you gave it all up and what and so I took that as a challenge okay really I'm gonna show you one day you mm -hmm. know and I, I didn't use it as like oh you guys are so mean I'm no I'm worthless and internalize it like that I'm like oh really okay well one day I'll be you, you know taking care of you guys you know so yeah yeah yeah, yeah you use that as fuel yeah you didn't let it you like you didn't let it you didn't let it um you didn't, you, you didn't have like the victim mindset, like why, exactly. you know, and so. But, and that goes back to my grandmother raising me. She used to always mm. say, and it was funny when I was younger, anytime we complain about anything, it could be the smallest thing. Like, oh, my back hurts. What, baby like milk? She used to say that. <laughs> what, baby want milk? Or, or she always say, hey, no, no worry for the birds. No pity yourself. And I never understood why she always said, that. I'm like, she's so mean, she, you know? <laughs> but now as an adult, I go, I see so many people who become victim to that uh, victim mentality. Mm -hmm. And I go, that's what she was, because I never feel sorry for myself. Mm. And I'm, you know what I mean? I'm always owning whatever my choices or whatever it is. I say, you know, I'll own it and I'll change it. And, mm. and, and, and I realize now, wow, she was instilling this in me because this is something that a lot of people face, you know, later in life. Oh, yeah. It wow. was, yeah. Uh, it can't. Yeah. Yeah. Your, your grandma sounds amazing. Oh my gosh. She was, yeah. Yeah. She's amazing. Wow. <laughs> um, but no, thank you for, you know, for sharing that. But of course, I, I, gosh how is it working with the rock and having a close bond with him you know i'd love for you to touch on that and just how much it means to you yeah he's he's amazing i mean yeah definitely was a hero growing up big fan of his when you know he was yeah. wrestling um mm -hmm. found out we were related later on like his mom knew my dad my dad and that generation those generations knew each other but we never oh, met wow. each other even she knew uncle leo my dad and the author and everybody um but you know all, all some ones are related oh some yeah are, somehow you know, but they yeah and um he one of he's like a brother to me you know uh, yeah since the beginning he's never really changed you know like he's he was so grateful to get in the industry on scorpion like i'm the scorpion king was his first movie and he just said like wow i can't believe i'm here still pinch himself you know and he still does that you know he's still like wow he's still grateful because he didn't expect anything you know mm -hmm. he worked for everything and the same thing he kind of manifested a lot of stuff and he worked for it um but he didn't expect anything and he still he doesn't he doesn't seem like he doesn't act like a movie star you know what i mean a typical mm -hmm. 
you know what I mean? on like, oh, how are you going to expect yeah. things? He's still a gentleman and it's a good person. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. so yeah. kind. He's just so kind. Yes. Like his, his, he's, he's a hard worker. Well, yeah. that's, just, that's just so awesome. But what, yeah. what do you love most about being a stunt double? I love, I, I get, I, I learn new skills all the time. Um, I get paid to, on like Hercules movie, I had to ride a four horse chariot. And I've ridden, I like drive a chariot and be like proficient at it because he's supposed to be like a really good chariot racer. Mm-hmm. So I got the, the world chariot racing champion from mm-hmm. um from Hungary come down to teach me how to ride a you know a chariot. And it's four huge Frisian, Frisian horses, they're bigger than Clydesdales, they're huge. Mm-hmm. And um just sitting there going, wow, this is I'm learning this skill. Like nobody gets to do this, you know. Yeah. And every every movie is a different challenge or a different learning experience. And yeah, I love, I, mean, I love traveling. Um, yeah. I get to travel a lot, meet new people. Definitely. Oh, that's yeah. That's and so and this the my favorite thing about doing stunt work. I was people ask me this is uh, when I do a stunt, and it's all quiet on the set, and it's, okay, and the, the stunt corner it go three, two, one, action. I'll do whatever my big stunt is. Boom, 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 hit the ground, and it's silent, and that's a cut, and then everybody's like, ah, <laughs> like all excited, you know, the producers yeah. love it. And that to me is rewarding to see that that they're happy with my performance or whatever I did, you know? Yeah. And it's, that's, yeah, to me, that's really rewarding that I was able to do my job well and make them like jump out of the seat, go, wow, that was awesome. And mm-hmm. yeah, and I it, love that part. It kind of sounds like, you know, like being an athlete when you're in a game and, you know, when you make a shot or like you score a touchdown and they're clapping for, you know, it's, it's. Yeah, it's, it's the same it's, feeling. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's pretty, yeah, the same feeling. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. And, you know, what yeah. has being, being someone, what has that meant for you in your career? It, it helped me a lot, you know, especially being raised by my grandmother um, with respect, um, integrity, uh, morals, values, all the things that we as Polynesians and, you know, are raised, are, raised with, with our family and instilled in us and their expectations. And we carry that on to, you know, Hollywood where a lot of people aren't raised like that. So you actually, it helps you as an asset because you stand out, you know, from Hawaii, you have the Aloha spirit. You bring that to a place where, you know, there's a bunch of people that's kind of like rat race, you know, you know, trying to, you know, screw each other over. You know what I mean? There's trouble trying in LA. Yeah, and then you come course. in there and you're like this Aloha, you know, and everybody's yeah. like, you're like, wow, this guy's great. And it just, and they, and they want some of that, you know? You can mm-hmm. see, like, they're always talking about their experiences in Hawaii or, oh, I got a Samoan friend I grew up with. And they, they get all excited about it, you know, and their family was great. And it's a huge asset, you know. Um, we, we're, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely a benefit uh, that, we, that we have, you know, for anything, not only stunts, anything in life, you know, any job after, if you bring that, that love and the respect and, the, you know, the drive yeah, that definitely. we're taught, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. No, that's, that's yeah. That, no definitely you know um thank you for sharing that but what mm-hmm. would you say is your favorite moment in your career my favorite moment oh there's a lot of them i like i like when i work with my wife she does stunts too oh that's awesome so she'll get to she'll get to um she'll get to work on a show with uh, me and i'm like we're sitting there like <laughs> looking at each other like look at well look how did we get here right both of us right yeah. we stunts together or she's doubling the lead i'm doubling Dwayne, the lead woman or something mm-hmm. yeah I, I, I like that. Yeah. I like when we work together. So awesome. Can I just say yeah. that, you know, looking on your Instagram and like you and your wife, you guys like love, for, I, I just love it. And it's just so awesome to see. So, oh Thank God, it's so, it's so awesome. Yeah. So what would your advice be to someone who wants to become successful in their life? Um, persistence. Just keep, you know, don't let anybody or anything stop you from your goal, your dream, your goal. <laughs> And this every day, continue to do one thing that will work towards your goal. Because the, the minute you stop doing that, it turn into two days, three days, four days, and you lose sight of it. So you need to have a reminder, even if it's you're looking at a picture of what you want to be or le- reading a book on what, you know, the, the craft, the learning, your, whatever profession you want to get into. Mm-hmm. But do it every day, you know. You're not, you know if, you, if you really want something bad enough, you, you'll be able to get there, you know. Mm-hmm. So just uh, keep working on your craft, learning and believe in yourself for sure yeah Yeah. thank you thank you for sharing that but you know we are in the home stretch of our interview Mm -hmm. and i'd love to do some rapid fire questions so the first thing that comes to mind okay so the first one is what is a habit you wish you started earlier uh i wish i 
man, pr- learn how to play some instruments. <laughs> I only play with spoons. <laughs> I'm pretty good on the spoons, but I wish I learned how to play ukulele or guitar. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so the second one is, is there a show that you're currently binge watching? Uh, we're watching, um, um, what are we watching, babe? Oh, I can't even forget about it. Not we we watch so many shows during the the, the break. The court. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, Young Rock. You know, we're watching oh, that, yeah. but it's not really binge watching because it's on every week. Oh, yeah. We've been watching that consistently. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Alrighty. Okay. So if you could have dinner with four goats, any you know, past or present, it could be anyone. Who would those four people be? Oh man, Bob Marley. Oh. Okay. Uh, well, wow, that's a tough one. Um, I don't know. I can't, I, I can't, I can't, I can't, there's so many to choose from. I can't, it's not really Bob Marley? Okay, one more. Yeah, I just love his philosophy okay. you know, in life. Um, yeah. who else would be, uh, shoot. Like, <laughs> my, my great-grandfather? Oh, well, okay, <laughs> I never no. got to meet him, but yeah. I heard a lot about him. Yeah. Um, um, who else? I don't know. Okay. All right. No, that's, that's, yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah, it's there's a, a lot. One. It's a, it's a tough one. There's a lot. Yeah, we're doing, yeah, yeah. Who's what yours? Is, I'm sorry? Who's your four? Oh, my four. Geez. Well, Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, okay. uh, Muhammad Ali, and oh. um, Lisa Leslie. Yeah, I just. Oh, okay. I thought, you got the, I, yeah, I, Muhammad Ali will be one of my. Ma- Bruce Muhammad Lee. Ali. Bruce Lee. Oh, hey, Bruce Lee. man. Bruce Lee. Yeah. yeah. Bruce Lee. Oh, I yeah. totally forgot yeah. about. Okay, there's. Yeah, I would have yeah, Bruce Lee for sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Um, yeah. what's yeah. the best advice you've ever received? Oh man, um, when your boat sinks, swim. My grandma used to tell me that. Ooh. When your boat, if your boat sink, don't go down with the boat. You swim. You know, mm-hmm. she used to always say that. You know, pretty much kind of goes into that whole don't you know don't feel sorry for yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, but she used to say that a lot. And she used to say, if you lay down with dogs, you get up with fleas. So, oh, yeah. so mind the company that you keep, you know? Oh, yeah. That's, good. <laughs> yeah. that's a good one. Oh, yeah. that, that's a good one. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. She, she was, she was a, this a walking book of wisdom. Book yeah. Of, yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Uh, yeah. What is the biggest lesson you've learned in the past 12 months? Hmm. The biggest lesson I've learned is that. I guess that if I were, when I retire, cause we are on lockdown for COVID mm-hmm. and then I'm like, if I retire, I'll, I'll be, I'll be cool. Cause a lot of times people don't know what happens when they retire and they're home with the wife all the time. Yeah. They're like, what do you know? And if they're going to kill each other or what? But we've been yeah. on lockdown the whole time and we're cool with each other still. So oh, I think the biggest lesson is like, oh, when, when it's all said and done, we can, like, yeah, I don't have to worry about us fighting and yeah. getting sick of each other. <laughs> We actually fell more in love with each other during the break. Gosh, yeah. that's so beautiful. That's, oh, that's good to know. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you for thank you for sharing that. Yeah. You know, yeah. last question is, you know, I want to continue to highlight our, our Pacifica, you know, people. Who is someone that you'd like to see on this show? Um hmm. think think mentai. Oh, man, tight set. Oh, okay. yeah, he's from my okay. community. Um, okay. but he's you know, he's been through a lot. He's you know, he's he's he's, he's, he's he has he's had some good stories. Okay. And he grew up, you know, he, he had a great, he's a great family, you mm-hmm. know, his family, and a lot of lessons learned. And yeah, I think he'd be he'd be a good athlete to uh, and he's you know, he's he's had to go through injuries and come back, and you know, yeah, so, definitely. Yeah, okay, he's, been, he's been through it, yeah. Okay, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll work on that one. I'll work on that one. I got his um, number. If you like, I can get cook. I, I, oh yeah, no, for I can. Sure. I can put you in touch with him. Man. Yeah, I. Oh my yeah. gosh, Tana Why that? I yeah, I would love that. Yeah, That'd he's be just a good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I would love that. But Tana Why, yeah. I just want to say thank you so much for joining me on my show. Like, yeah. I, I just have so much love and gratitude. I'm so I'm so thankful, and I just hope your story just will inspire and give hope to anyone listening to this. Show them that they can achieve and anything they set their mind to by putting in the work. You know, thank you so much again, Tanawai. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Of course. Oh, yes. Yes.
Slice. 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 Slice.